Brad with Simple Suburban Living and today we're going to be doing some system design changes on our aquaponics system and talking a little bit about using hard water versus using filtered water. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the differences and why it's important and kind of what I found over um, just about a year of running the system here in our house. So what I have is currently I'm feeding and topping off our aquaponics system with uh, well water, hard water, unsoftened straight from the well water. Uh, my original thought was that, uh, you know, I want to get all those minerals, we have higher iron content in our water here, uh, and things like that, that I thought would be good for our plants, so I wanted to try to get all that stuff into the, into the system through our well water. Uh, what I found was, a lot of those nutrients aren't readily available to the plants right from the well, including iron, and uh, it also, we have a lot of carbonates in the water, so um, calcium carbonate and other types of carbonates that cause a lot of uh, pH problems. Um, some carbonates are good and some too many carbonates are not good so it makes it very hard to bring your pH down to a manageable level. And so what I'm going to do is actually convert our system over to running off of a filtered water system. And this isn't something that you absolutely have to do. There are other ways of managing carbonates but I think I've found that this is going to be a little bit easier for me. So what we have here, this is a reverse osmosis uh, filter system. Um, I didn't purchase this for the aquaponic system. I happen to be lucky enough to have one of these in our home already. We actually never use this. Uh, we're perfectly fine with just our regular well water for drinking and that. And so we've never really used the filter system. It's just been kind of sitting here since we moved in. So I'm going to actually plug right into this and uh, just run this over to my automatic top off system so that the water is going to start to top off from the filter. Basically all I did was just purchase one of these little quarter inch um, quick connects uh, tees and I'm going to just tap right into this water line that comes out of the filter here. Um, run that over to my top off system and it will slowly kind of top off the system and change out the water with filtered water. So um, I'll just kind of quickly take you through the process uh, of switching this out and then I'll show you a couple experiments just to show you the difference between the filtered water and our hard, hard water from our well. So just getting these valves shut off here and just as a tip, these always leak um, when you're shutting them off and turning them back on, especially if they're a little bit older. These really, these self-tapping valves are really not the best idea. Um, for a permanent solution, so I might do a video later on about how to replace these and uh, just get something a little bit more permanent installed. But right now, I'm just getting the valves shut off and going to disconnect our, our line. This is the, the current setup right now. I've just got the quarter inch um, water line here tapped into our, our well water, and this goes over to the, the uh, automatic top off system. So I'm just going to disconnect this and then run it over to our filter and attach it over there. Okay, so hopefully if all goes well, we'll be able to just hook this right up. You can see this this was clear. This hose used to be clear, this, this uh, quarter inch plastic line here. And this is just our hard water has so much iron in it and uh, other minerals it just it turned it orange or red so um, should be okay but all right let's see how well I've never used these quick connects I usually use the brass fitting so we'll see how well these these work tanks up above here where all this water is coming from. Because the water goes through these filters so slowly there's a couple of pressure tanks mounted up in the ceiling and basically uh, that allows uh, it to build up a uh, you know 10 or 15 gallons of water that can be ready to go on demand. So it's pretty cool but it's not making this process very easy. any leaks from that so far. 
a good sign. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the bottom of my sump tank. And we've got the quarter inch water line that we just hooked up to that filter system. And that comes in here and it goes through this, the bottom of my sump tank. And on the other side of this is just a small float. And that float um, just keeps track of the, the level of the water. And anytime the water level drops below this point, it lets a little bit of water in. And so in my sump tank, because the, the four grow beds are draining and, and filling at different times, this, this uh, level is constantly going up and down. And anytime, you know, the plants use a little bit of water, a little bit of water evaporates, that kind of thing. So eventually it kind of starts to dip a little bit below this level each time it fills and drains. And this just automatically tops it off. Um, this has been an amazing part of the system. It just makes it just completely automated. Um, and so I, I never have to worry about manually topping it off. I never have to worry about, you know, is there enough water in the system and all that kind of good stuff. It's just, it always, it always works. Um, so that way the pump that's in the bottom of the sump can never run dry. Uh, it just really works great. So if you're building a system, I would highly recommend that you add some type of an auto fill system. I'll put a link in the description for these, uh, um, this little float system. It, it was less than $15. It wasn't expensive. So um, I'll put a link in, in for that product so you can pick one up if you're um, looking at building a system. Okay, so basically what I have here is um, just two test tubes or the uh, API test kit test tubes. One of them is filled up with our filtered water and one of them is filled up with just the water rate from the aquaponics system, which is just our, our well water. Um, I have this carbonate test kit. It's carbonate hardness is what it is. It tests for there's general hardness and carbonate hardness. And I have a video that, that goes into depth about carbonates and, and buffers and pH and all that good stuff. I'll put a link to those at the end of this video if you'd like to check more information on that. Um, but this test kit is made by API and basically this just tests for carbonate hardness of water. And how it works is you add a drop to the water and it starts off as a blue color. And you can see it's showing the hardness there. And you just keep adding drops until it turns yellow. Now as you can see, where I add more drops, this one's got a blue tint to it, it'll become even more blue here. I'll add two, three, four, five, I'll add five drops to that one, just because I know how many it needs. But you just keep adding drops to this water until it turns until it turns yellow and you count the number of drops that you add. So as you can see for our filtered water, it already turned yellow, just one drop. And that just means that there's zero there's no carbonates. There's there's no carbon hardness to this water. There's no carbonates in it at all. Our well water, um, you'll you'll see it takes up to fifteen drops just depending. Still blue. <clears throat> Still blue. Right in there, it turns yellowish. <laughs> so, um, I actually didn't even count that time because I, I know it's uh, or, or more than 12. The point is, is that the water that I was getting from our well just, just had way too much carbonate hardness and that was really causing a hard time for me to buffer the pH in the system down to where I want it. This was caused by our hard water and it was also caused by the river rock that I had in the system which was adding a lot of calcium carbonate which is a carbonate also. So now that we're adding our filtered water to the system we're not going to have to deal with those carbonates so we can adjust our pH a lot easier. Now you don't want to have no carbonates in the system because you know you could add a little bit of acid to the system and the pH will fly way down. You could add some, you know, uh, some alkaline uh, substance into the system and the pH will fly way up. So you do want to have some buffer in the system. And because I have some hard water in there already, and then adding the filter water, I think I'm going to be able to get to a point in the system where it's balanced just right. And so I'm going to keep adding more filtered water to our system here, and I'll keep testing our carbon hardness. Generally, I want the carbon hardness to be down to about three or four. So, meaning that it would take three or four drops to turn this from yellow, or sorry, from blue over to yellow. So, real handy little little kit. So, if you're using well water or 
city water or anything like that, you want to test the carbon hard disk just to kind of see where you're at. Um, this is a great little little kit to get. So um, another test kit from API, and those are API is the company that makes uh, all of our the other test kits that I'm using, the pH test kits and everything else. So okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. Um, this was one of those things that I addressed in my aquaponics tips and tricks video. One of those things that um, I initially went back and forth with, whether to use well water or filtered water. Um, and one of the things that I mentioned that I wish that I would have changed. And so now I've gotten around to doing that, and so we'll see some improvement over the system here um, in the next couple months. If you've been following along, I just recently changed out all my rock with a new type of rock, which is also going to help greatly with my pH issues and carbonates as well. And uh, now that I've got filtered water running into the system, we have a lot better control over what goes in and how to manage the, the pH levels and carbonates and all that good stuff. So I have a little more control this way. Um, if you don't have one of these carbon hardness tests, I think this one was like uh, $6 or $7 on Amazon. Um, I sell like an Amazon commercial, but I buy a lot of stuff there. Um, so this is definitely something I would recommend getting if you're having trouble with this type of thing, or just to find out kind of what type of hardness your water has, even city water. Um, a lot of times we'll, we'll have a high carbon hardness, so that can cause problems with pH. Um, so hopefully you learned something. Please hit that thumbs up button for me if you, if you uh, like the video or found it informational, although I really do appreciate that. Subscribe to the, the channel if you want to follow along and see how things progress with the indoor aquaponics system here. And please, if you have questions or comments, I would love to hear about that stuff. Throw it down below, and uh, I hope you'll be able to answer any questions you have. Or if you have something to add to the discussion, please go ahead and put that in the comments as well. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.